What's going on, everybody out there all across the land? Of course, we are back right now on the number one station on the net, Hotline Radio, number one show on the net, Keith Harris Show. Of course, I'm your guy, Keith Harris. Big shouts out. We just got finished shopping it up with Miss Toy. And now, without any further ado, also, listen, this man right here has been doing some amazing things. Uh, he's off the chain. And now I finally got him on the phone and can find out some of the madness behind the magic and how he does what he does. Business mind is, is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Um, so without any further ado, i like to roll out the red carpet for the CEO of XMG, my main man, Brandon Carter. What's going on with you, boy? How's it going? Thanks for having me. Hey, no doubt, man. Honored to have you on the show. Uh Listen, one of the questions that I want to go into, I want to ask first for everybody out there all across the world is, where are you from? St. Louis. Okay, the Lou. Big shouts out to the Lou. I always got to say, man, you know, the Lou has a lot of stuff going on down there, like a lot of action in the Lou, uh, Lou a lot of artists. And, but you know, but you yourself, one thing about you is you have been able to bring artists from different sides from different sides, you know what I'm saying, not just the Lou. And we'll get into that in just a minute. But, you know, first and foremost, I want to ask you, uh, you know, what what was your door, what was your step into the industry? Did you come into it? Because I know you're the CEO now, but did you come into the industry as a as an artist at any point? Or, you know, was it was it the business mind that you, you started a business first? How did you do it? Um, well, I came into it more on the business aspect of, um, my brother actually was uh, used to manage a lot of rock bands, and um, I used to always go to their practices. And he uh, included me on a co-management situation with one of his rock bands, um, which is um, um, which is pretty big right now. So um, that's how I kind of got into it. Uh, I went to, into as well as uh, um, did an in our internship with Universal Records, also does stuff with RCA. Um, and it's not my own management company back in Oh, okay, okay. So you, so so that that look, that's that's because I used to ask this question because you know I've had a few of your artists on on the show, and and yes. one thing that I have noticed about each and every one of them is not just musically, you know how talented they are, but also you know just their mental state and i've said that to almost each and every one of them but just their mental state they're in a they're in a they're calm they know what they're doing they're disciplined you know what i'm saying there's no wilding out left yeah. to right and and what that made me realize is that i could i could tell from that that whoever was picking them you know was doing this with a fine tooth comb you weren't just going out getting artists that did said they could do something because a lot of people can sing a lot of people could rap you went out and you found people that had particular qualities that went along with that Did, w was that a plan for you at the beginning you know i um always preach quality rather than quantity you know you can have you know 15 artists but um if you know and, and get no record sales you know and, and not have that successful artist and get nobody signed you know or you can have those four or five that are actually making moves and making noise in the industry, you know, that are humble. Mm -hmm. um, you don't find a lot of humble artists these days. They, uh, a lot of them get us on the radio, so I go, oh, I've made it. Yeah. Well, no, you haven't made it. You know, so, I mean, it's it takes more than just talent in this business. You know, it takes a lot of humbleness. It takes a lot of learning and the willingness to take direction. And right. that's what I have in the team I have right now. Right. And, and about how, you know, and I, I, without giving away too much, I mean, I know we're talking about it, but, you know, your your team, is it is it fairly, and, and I know, like you said, it's not about quantity, it's about quality, but, do, you know, do you have a, a fairly decent sized team? <clears throat> I mean, you know, are you are you stopping at this point to, to just kind of, you know, continue to nurture these artists or, you know, if, if somebody else can fit in the door, would you take them on? Uh, it really is all depends on the situation. I'm always um, open um, to new talent. Um, however, um, right now we have projects that we are working on, and I'm really focusing on the artists that we have right now. Um, however, if that, if that uh, individual comes um, and brings something to the table that um, that's unique, mm -hmm. um, I'll be open to entertain it. Right, right. Now, how, how do you find how do you you know how do you find these artists? I mean, because you're in St. Louis, like. 
you know, how do you find artists in, in Connecticut or, or NY? How, how do they reach out to you or, or do you, you know, find them or? Well, actually, um, let me say this too. Um, I was raised here in St. Louis, I guess, since I was a kid, but I was actually born in Brooklyn. Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, but uh, outside of that, um, I've been in this business for a while and just networking, um, the social media showcases, um, really, uh, getting some tons of submissions to my email a day uh, and just talking to these artists because a lot of times you can get a great record you can get great songs you talk to the artists and they know nothing about the business and that's fine mm-hmm. if they're willing to take direction mm-hmm. but if you don't know anything about the business and you just don't want to listen then there's no point in working with you and yeah. I can do nothing for you <laughs> yeah, yeah you said about look you said a whole lot right there you know what I'm saying because, uh, you know, you, you can't deal with the knuckle. You know what I'm saying? You can't deal with people who, who aren't willing to buckle down and understand that you know what you're talking about and, you know, and, and respect your credit in the game. It, because, it, look, it's, it's exactly. you know, you, you can you can mold the artist, but you can't raise someone. You can't raise an artist. You know what I mean? Exactly. You, know, you can't babysit. You know, a long time of babysitters. Right. Right. Um. Now, about how many, how long has um, has XMG been in effect, been a movement? Eight years. Oh, um, okay. We've been going eight years strong. I've been in the music business for myself 15. Man. But uh, XMG is eight years strong. So you've seen them come and go. Yeah, we're, at, you know, we're, we're continuously growing mm-hmm. um, and making bigger and better moves, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll tell you like this. Just this last year in November, um, we secured a direct distribution deal to Sony, to Sony Records. So, oh, man. Um, that, that's a, that was a huge move for us. That's, that's you know, the, everything that we released is just released through Sony. So, that's, I mean, that's, that's a huge imprint. That's a major move right there because, <clears throat> excuse me, because in the business, I mean, you know, I, you know, I'm, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, for me, I'm, I'm kind of just questioning, but distribution is, 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 means a lot, right? Right. Um, especially when you have a, a major brand that's distributing your, your product, you know. So, right. you know, a lot of these artists can go through, you know, the iTunes, the CD Babies, and the Tune Chorus. But, you know, we go through directly through Sony the Orchard, which is a huge, huge platform for these, these artists to actually get on and um, have their music distributed through a major platform. Right. And that also, you know, I, I, I think what that also um, means is that for you know for it, it leaves a lot of more room for the for the independent um owners you know or or people like yourselves xmg that leaves a lot of room for you to have your creativity just you know in in your in, in your in in building your team and you know making the hits that you want to you know you want to make and things like that it leaves room open for you so that you don't have to necessarily go look for that major label deal um i assume it just gives you room to have a distrib- distributor you know, you, you know, um, a lot of times you can do things independently as long as you have the right strategy to do it. You know, a lot of these artists will go out and search for these major deals, not understanding that, you know, you're getting all this money and these huge advancements and everything, it's just a loan. You know, you, you have to pay that money back. Oh, man. And if you don't, and then you, I mean, you're, ba- you're basically, you're basically finished. I mean, if you're not going to pay that money back, or you know, you go here and spend all this money on these cars and these houses like these artists do. You know, you don't have any type of um, business representative behind you to show you how to spend this money. Mm-hmm. You're going to be screwed. Right. And that's that's even yeah. becoming, and I think that's becoming more so nowadays, you know, in the last years, as a matter of fact, because, you know, the social media itself has been a great platform for, I guess, people to just kind of know who everyone is and to recognize who the artists are. But at the same time, the computer or the Internet, and, and that's why I draw the line between social media and the Internet, because it's just, you know, it's relevant to what you said. You know, somebody can go get a major deal, okay, and end up owing all this money to, to the other label, and then everybody's downloading your music for free. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so, I, 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 a lot of times, it, a lot of times this comes from, you know, um, these artists putting so many songs out on social media. I mean, they don't understand. Yeah. Push one single, put that out on social media, and make them purchase the product. You put everything out on social media, they have no reason to go and purchase the product. Right. Because it's that one. 
And, and, and you know what? That's why I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm, I'm talking to a master, a master of the craft like yourself, because that is a question that, that I think. Um, and, and you know what? And, and, and I tell you what, Brandon, I don't want you to give too much away either. So stop me whenever you have to or just kind of run around the question because it's still business. And I understand that. But now what is is that the key to that? Because I've always wondered myself, why do people keep running into that rope? Like, you know, years ago, people would do exactly what you said. Put something out this hot and make you want the rest and go buy it. And I miss buying albums. I, I have to be honest. I miss buying albums because once I stopped at the time that I could stop buying albums and could actually download everything, the music wasn't good anymore either. And, and I don't I don't know if that's what took that effect. So how would an artist go about so when people now for those people out there who don't want you because you got some selfish people who don't want to go spend any money on an album so how do you make these people have to buy that album Be, and, and, and then will they avoid your artist because they're saying listen i, I don't want to go spend dollar spend ten dollars on this 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 bomb cd this this real good cd this great cd i want to go download this whack cd or this whack music for free do you think we're in this type of time where people are doing that or well you know it really started a lot with um you know like you have the Napsters where people were downloading loads of mp3s for you know for, for free you know and we're, we're in that day and age of the digital day and age so i mean it's not like back in the, in the days of like you know mm -hmm. uh, 10 15 years ago when people were going to these stores and buying cds anymore Right. You know, the day of the really the CD is out. I mean, you may catch a few people like myself who still are fans of a certain artist and will go out and actually buy the CD. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times nowadays, they'll just do it digitally, and they, even digitally, they don't want to pay for it. You know, you really have to make them want your want your album. I mean, you have to mm -hmm. um, you have to have that that material that draws that draws their attention. Right. I mean, right. everybody's not going to have that type of material. I mean. It's, that's just being real. Yeah. You, you have your talented artist out here and you have your not as talented artists out here now. There are some <laughs> demographics for those type of artists though. Right. You know, it's because, you know, if you listen to the radio these days, it's no, it's no longer really just about how good your lyrics are or how good the music is. I mean, they're, you know, this is a, this is a numbers game. It's a money game. Exactly. You know, so, and, you know, if you have the right type of budget, you can, you can have a song that's basically saying nothing and get expense. And so that's how it is. You know, and, and, and that's how you know, it is. Uh, and, and, and a lot of these people, a lot of these people, I'm not even understanding where they get these budgets from sometimes. <laughs> because it's, it's almost like, you know, they didn't have the big budgets necessarily at first to put this music out. So then I go back to, I rewind and I go, well, who gave them? I'm, okay, they didn't have the big budgets to put this music out there and, not, and aren't saying anything. So I'm like, well, where did they get the big budget to put out this music that isn't saying anything? And so it kind of takes me back to, you know, is that what, you know, is, is that what people would, is, is that what the big wigs or the people, you know, sitting in these high chairs, is that what they would rather have put out because of the newer generations? You, you know, I, it's a confusing thing, Brandon. What, you know, uh, if you were looking at the newer generation, you know, they listen to uh, more so uh, like, like the Young Thug, the Bobby Shemurge, and things of that nature. Right. But if you look at like a lot of these big ways and everything, a lot of these labels, and they know how it works is, you know, they may put up a hundred, hundred thousand dollars, you know, for promotion and advertising for a record. Any radio station is going to play that. You yeah. know, so, uh, you know, it's, it's really not about, <laughs> can you spit anymore? Can you... Can you actually put together a song, you know, a, 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 a good music? Right. It's not really about that anymore. Right. You know, that's why, like, you know, hip hop is barely coming back. It's, hold, it's holding on by a thread. Oh. And, it's, and, that, and that's bad because I was a huge fan. Of, I'm, I'm a huge fan of hip hop. Mm -hmm. You know, but nowadays is a day of, you know, uh, one hit wonders. Sure. You know, you get a hit. You get a hit on the radio, and, and this song was playing for like you know almost two years. Yeah, on you know, the same song over and over again. And if you listen to the radio these days, they have a rotation. They play probably the same ten songs all day. That's it. That's absolutely it. You know. And and nowadays and, those ten songs are, are talking about the same thing. You know, and and exactly. 
is saying the same thing. And, and to be quite honest, there is, is, is nothing is it's not saying anything of substance. You know, that's one thing I want to kind of touch on with your artists. You know, as a matter of fact, you know, under your under your team is that. I like, I, you know, I like, I like those cats because, you know, first of all, your rappers, I, I like them because they're all saying something. Okay. And what I mean by that is it's, it's understandable. Okay. It's, you know, it, it's got the knowledges. They're, they're not just saying stuff that you can just throw up in the air. There's actually some jewels within what they're saying. And they take it back to the fundamentals of rap music. Um, I won't even say hip hop. They take it back to the fundamentals of rap music, things that you can really listen to clearly and at the same same time relate to. But they're not dumbed down to, you know, for somebody to say, oh, they're, they're weak lyricists or, you know, they don't know what they're talking about. You know what I'm saying? KC, for instance, um, you know, PLK, hot, hot spitter. You know what I mean? Those are all wonderful artists. And um, then even talking about Warren, you know, I spoke to Warren yesterday, obviously just him being good at his craft and not being afraid. I was telling him him this yesterday and not being afraid to just stick to what he wants to stick to. Not feeling like, look, you have to go out and, and try to say this. So you got to say what this guy is saying or say what that guy is saying to make it. And I think that's an important thing in this game is to hold your own. Be good at what you do. Have skill, but still stick to what don't shy away from what you like because I think that'll find its way back if more people do that. And so that's why I had to commend your staff for doing that. Most definitely. Most definitely. You know, I, I grew up, you know, um, that real music. You know, my, my grandfather was a, you know, famous jazz player, you know, so he had a, um, a gold album that, that went gold over in Germany, you know, so I grew up around musicians. You know, I'm, I'm actually a musician myself. I played the piano since I was seven years old. Man. That actually gave me that good ear for music. Mm -hmm. you know, I played the drums since I was 11 years old. So, I mean, I, I grew up around music, right. you know, so um, that's what I'm trying to bring back is real music, you know, real lyricism um, and just quality music. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you have a, a smash hit, it's a, it's a smash hit, we're not just going to be smash hits because we paid for it. Right. You know, so <laughs> smash hits because we actually took our time in the studio and we, we came up with these hits. Right. You want to be... So, that's that, that, that's why I really am picky about who I work with. Yeah. Um, and that, that, that's, don't get me wrong; that's not to say that these other rappers who are now in this generation there's not a lane for them. There is because obviously, obviously there is because they're getting played. Right. So there is a lane for them. But me myself, I just really prefer to deal with deal with artists who um, have that old school lane. You know, just right. making good music. And it's timeless. I, I think when you do it like that, you know, the music. Turn it comes out timeless because you have you have you know you have the what's in now or the fads and the things that's going on now and then you have music that represents life itself and and that would never die because every human being you know you guys are making music that's just relative to each human being's life in general opposed to being relevant to necessarily a style because we know styles change you know um. Yeah. You know, and, and as you say, that's why, it's, you know, or as we say, that's why there's a lot of what, you know, one hit wonders out there. When you can make music that'll last, you know, they could have been back in that generation and can still carry on for the next four or five generations. I think it means a lot. And you guys are focusing on that. Um, now, you know, and you saying you played piano uh, before, you know, yourself. Yeah, I played, yeah, I played piano since the age of seven years old. My grandfather taught me how to huh. play the keyboard. Um, like I said, he was a, he was an organ player, and he also was a keyboard player too. So mm -hmm. you know, I, I've worked around music for years. So you knew, you know, right? So. You had that ear for already. Now, you know, I, I know you you said that you you know obviously I know you do the CEO thing, but has there ever been a time where you made you know you were into making songs even if you didn't put them out or anything like that? You know, um, not really. I, I did music more just for my personal hobby. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I played in, you know, church and things of that nature, so I did that, but it wasn't really something that I wanted to get into as far as, like, being a rapper or a singer or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, um, not saying that I could probably play as a, as a maybe piece to a band, but, I mean, I still play the piano uh, very heavily, mm -hmm. but at the same time, um, I feel my strong suit was business, and I felt like that these artists needed direction. Yeah. Um, to a standpoint of they have all the talent in the world, but 
they don't know they can, they can record a million songs and not know what to do with them. Oh, and that's a big. You know? And that's what and that's what I was seeing. I was seeing like, like people just record mixtape after mixtape. Like, why are you recording all these mixtapes? <laughs> and it's just like it's not coming out. You know, they're, they're trying to put them out three at a time, four at a time. Like, you know, that's not the correct way to do to do things. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't feed everybody all that music. No one's gonna listen to all that music. Right, and and just keep making, you know, and like you say, or or keep making mixtapes and not know what to go, how to go to the next level, you know, with that. Now, what's some of the plans, um, you know, for XMG, you guys, and and you know, just you know, are are, are you going to line up, you know, are you going to take the whole team on a, on a tour eventually in the future, or you're just kind of working? You know, that's in, that's in the works. Um, the XMG tour is definitely in the works. Um, uh, that's just been something I'm um, maybe shooting for maybe next end of next year, early 2017, some of that nature. Um, it's going to take a little time, but right now uh, we're currently working on um, each, each person's project EP. We've got a couple singles dropping this summer, um, a few singles that have already dropped mm-hmm. as well, too. Um, uh, and also we're also working on the X and G compilation album. Hey. So that- it's gonna be a, yeah, it's, it's going to be it's gonna be hot. It's going to be dropping this summer. That's what I was going to wonder too. I was just going. I was going to get around to asking that. You know, could everybody expect something where where you you know just have all this talent, just you know just kind of flexing on on the you know on the album together? Because man, that's going to be a hot. That's going to be crazy. And then the thing is, is there's yeah, there's there's going to be something for everybody on it. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have the from the R and B to the hip hop to the uh, you know it's going to be very different. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to be it's going to be able to attract to the masses mm-hmm. right. you know so um, and, and that's my whole goal yeah um, is to basically attract to the masses not just you know one local box right right how do you how do you um how, how do you go as, as far as you know finding the right producers you know for for your artists you know you know a lot of the artists have their preferences as far as producers you want producers go, you know, we, we all sit down and um, go over tracks to see what really would fit on the project. Mm-hmm. Um, I know, just, for example, you know, Casey has a producer that he's specifically working with for his next project. You know, you know, Miss Ward, you know, she's, um, has a specific producer that she's working with as well, too. You know, it, and it's really just about what's hot. I mean, we'll work with anybody. Right. If, if you have hot tracks, we're not going to say, okay, well, you're independent, we're not going to work with you because you're not a major. Mm-hmm. That's not how it works. If you have a hot track, you have a hot track. Right. Yeah, we're going to work with you. And, 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 and the good part about that is is you are still giving your artists a creative, you know, you're giving them freedom, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, at the same time to stick with who works for them because I've seen that. You know, a lot of times, you know, with independent artists coming up where they have their own producers, but the people that they are working with are like, okay, well, we got this producer and we want this to, you know, be who you work with. Then next thing you know, you're in the studio and people are just throwing these artists beats. And, and now you're, you know, now the artist is forced to try to relax and feel good on this track and it's just not working. And the only one who thinks it's hot is the people who made them do it. Right. You know? That's why I, I like to give them creative control over the projects. I mean, yeah. yes, I do have a lot of say so on what goes on these projects, but I mean, and it's all said and done. I mean, they're, they're the artists. I, mean, I want them to be comfortable mm-hmm. with what they're putting out. Right. Of course, right. it has to be. Make, uh, of course, it has to make sense. <laughs> exactly. But, <you> know, yeah. <laughs> it's got to make sense. But you know, you got to be comfortable in the studio. I mean, you got to have that chemistry with that producer, and that, that chemistry is out there. I mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna come out with a good quality song anyway. Right now, you, you know, kind of going to the to the R&B side of things. You know, I, you know, Yasmin Ward, amazing artist. You know, I, I heard I heard I heard a cover she had done. You know, and that I was like, what in the world? And she had done that to um, you know, to 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 another um, uh, you know, I spoke about it before the other day on the show. Had done that to a Winehouse cover, and I was amazed at just what she was able okay. to bring to the table. And then on top of that. The, the song you guys put out, you know, on a part-time lover, again, an amazing song. So, we, you know, we, we know how she rose. Do you have any other R&B arsenal um, under the wing, too? Um, right now, outside of KC, that would be it. I mean, um, mm-hmm. like I said, I'm always open to new talent. Um, right now, um, 
those are the ones that caught my eye. Those are the ones that uh, we're working on projects right now. Yeah. And um, those are the ones we're, uh, we're running with. And in case he has this flip side to him, he just, he caught me yes. off guard because like he was saying, everybody would, you, you would look at this guy and just think that he's just rapping. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, 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 yeah. and, and and I don't mean just rapping as in just rapping, but I mean like, like, you know, that's what he's doing. And it, it's so crazy because he has this image that he can do both. You know what I'm saying? He's got that swag style to him at the same time. You know, he he's hollering at the ladies at the same time. And then I liked his track too because again, we t- it was clean. It it was it was up to date. It wasn't 1970s, but it was still clean. And I think that's that was good. Or well, great rather. You know. So um I right, now okay, so so otherwise are, are there any um, you know, what would you like to let us know, I guess, uh, you know, about, you know, just um, what to look out for, like how to go, you know, um, you know, find, you know, just how to follow XMG's whole movement, what you want the people to get involved with and, um, you know, what, what you like everybody to do to, to just help this thing up, you know, to help this lift off. Look, I had to write that day down. I had to write that day down because I, I know you know what I'm saying. I, I get to holler at um at, at Powell, you know what I'm saying on social media sometimes. Look, I had to write that down. I, I heard that New York Wave track and I was like, man, and I, yeah, yeah, that just brought me back. It brought me back. Like I always say to people, I'm, I'm from that older era, you know what I'm saying that 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 different era, you know of, of um you know rap music. So when I heard that, I said, yeah, okay, you know what I'm saying, man. How do y'all? I won't even ask that, man. I was going to say, how do y'all, how do y'all get some of the the, the collaborations y'all get on there? Because that ain't nothing to sleep on, man. Big shouts out to Powell and and, and Fred. You know what I'm saying? Because that ain't, you know, them, though the way y'all doing this is nothing to sneeze at. Like, do you get an artist their creativity to go find who they're going to collaborate with? Two well, you or know what? Well, you know what? Powell is a little bit different story because you know he he had a lot of these relationships. You know, he's out there in New York. You know, yeah. and a lot of these artists, you know, he. They deal with him like that, you know. So it's not for him to make a phone call. You know, I give him the, the, the creativity to get who he wants. I mean, just because he makes great selections, right? You know, um, Exile's another one. You know, what I'm saying he has a, a great, great following. He's polished, and you know, he's got a nice little following with the DJs out there. He, he knows a lot of people as well, right? You know, same same with KC. You know, he, he just got off a tour with uh, Slaughterhouse and Pretty Ricky. You Man. know, so it's, it's, there's a lot going. It's a lot we have going on. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's, that, look, and that, that's what I was saying earlier. I, you know, when I talked to everybody, I'm like, "Yo, the team is really working." And in Exile, look, I was t- look. I told X the other day. I said, "Man, I I, I did the little search and you know, doing my homework as usual." I'm like, "Dang!" Like he had a re- yeah. yeah, Like you go to this guy's YouTube page and he just got mad stuff on it already. You know what I mean? So, so everybody's putting in a lot of work, and, and and that's that's good. Like I say, you guys are really doing, it and I say that all the time, and and that just shows also your, you know, and how you know how ready, you know, how ready you are, and just how much you know what you're doing at this. And um, look, listen, I know you guys are gonna have so much more success than you've already had as well. You've been having amazing success, but I know there's gonna be more. And I, I want you, like I tell all, all of y'all over there before, you know what I'm saying? I want you to, anytime you know you got a home on the show and, you know, can consider me, a, consider me a venue, consider me a platform. As you push it out, okay. send it my way, and, and I'm, I'm rotating it for you. Okay. No problem at all. Yeah, we have a couple singles coming out. I'm going to be sending you away, so right. be on the lookout. 
No doubt. No doubt. I'm ready to play him. Look, and if I, I keep my ear open too. You know what I'm saying? If I hear anybody that's really worthy, you know what I'm saying, of a phone call, not just anybody, because I know your inbox be blown up with cats who, you know, just, just probably think they can, <laughs> think they could do something, you know, but if, if I run into, yeah, yeah if, if I find somebody, or I, you know, I know anybody who really might be qualified, you know, I, I try to let you check them out and, you know, kind of, kind of see where you, you know, what you think about them. If they qualify, they qualify. If they don't, they out back. But, you know. Well, most definitely appreciate that. No doubt, man. Listen, it, it, listen, it's been an honor to talk to the man behind, you know, I listen, I, I call you the man behind the madness of XMG because so much goes on and, and, and you know, you you steer that ship well. Big shouts out to Leora um, Talent, too, as well. I don't want to forget her. Um, <clears throat> but, you, you know, you, you steer that whole ship and you steer that team, you know, uh, with a lot of grace professionally. You're a humble dude and you know what you're talking about. And, and I, I really see, you know, where these artists get their mold and they learn that from, man. So, listen, Brandon, you keep doing your thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. And and who who else, who else you got out there that we haven't had on the show yet that we need to get on? You know, um, that, you know, that is a, a good question. Because, you know, um, I'm working on, uh, I've been working on this, uh, situation with this hustle gang artist, you know what I'm saying? So, okay. um, that okay. may be in the works very soon. All right. Uh, to bring on the show. You know, that's, that's a major, that's a major move for me as well, too. Um, also been working with, uh, Kyle Dawson on some, uh, some things, too. He's, uh, if you're not familiar with him, he's the former president of, uh, Murray Inc. Inc. Oh, yeah, I, I know, yeah, I'm, you know, I, so, yeah, me and, me and Cal done had some conversations, too. Big shouts out to Cal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, we got some things going on in the future, you know, so. Yeah. Um, there's a few things we have here coming out. I mean, KC has a new single that's coming out. Um, huge, huge feature, huge feature that that's going to be on there. Hey. You can't reveal that just yet. Hey, you know what? Uh, I, you know what, then, Brandon? I tell you what, we're not going to say it. I caught wind of it. I already caught wind, but I ain't going to put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we so, you, so you call you call in, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, I, I already know, but I feel you. We are not even gonna let it out, but yeah, yeah. It, but I'm gonna say that's heavy. Kudos on that. Yeah, that's it's, the, it's it's real heavy. You know, that's the next thing we we working on. You yeah. know, and uh, PLK Pal, you know, has a uh, uh, major one too. If I have to swear to God, son. So yeah, it's, it's we coming. Uh, look, we coming. I look, I I know it, my brother. <laughs> All right, look, man, listen, everybody out there, uh, main man Brandon Carter on here. We're going to hurry up and try to uh, wrap this up. Make sure you check him out on social media. Also, don't forget, if you missed any of this conversation right now, it will be posted on social media shortly for you to check out. Um, look, be looking out for this whole squad because they're doing big things, and I'm going to be keeping up with them right here and, and keeping everybody in tune with what they got going on. Mad love, and i love to talk to you again, um, Brandon and Keep doing your thing and li listen. We'll, look, we'll talk later on, and we got to end the show. But we'll talk a little later on, and um, you know, uh, catch up with everything going on. And I got your back one thousand percent over here. Most definitely. Hey, thanks for having me. Shout out to the whole X and G stick on whole X and G squad. Let's keep working. No doubt. All right, Brandon, my man. Okay. One. Everybody out there, that was Brandon Carter, dude. Dude is doing heavy, man, I ain't even got to tell y'all, y'all already see, just look at the artists, follow the artists, see what they got going on, and definitely keep up with them on the Keith Hurst Show, because they on here, I'm getting these good exclusives, and I'm happy about that, I get to plug in on all this good music going down, and everything going on, and I couldn't be more excited about that, so I appreciate that whole XMG staff, Brandon Carter, everybody out there, uh, big shouts out to all y'all, hope to talk to y'all soon. You've been listening to the Keith Harris Show. I'm your host, Keith Harris, right here on the number one station on the net, Hotline Radio. I'll see y'all tomorrow.